According to CEO Elon Musk and a NASA official, the last major standalone test between Booster 7 and flight readiness is a full 33-engine static fire. Together, B7's 33 Raptor 2 engines could produce up to 7,600 tons, or 16.7 million pounds, of thrust at sea level, likely making Starship the most powerful rocket stage in the history of space flight. A wet dress rehearsal is a routine test conducted before a rocket launch and is generally designed to simulate every aspect of a launch save for engine ignition and liftoff. Most importantly, that involves thoroughly filling the rocket with fuel and passing all of the checks the same rocket would need to give to be cleared for launch. The first full-stack WDR will test Starbase's launch facilities just as much as Booster 7 and Ship 24. Booster 7 resumed its static fire test campaign Monday with a full-duration firing of 14 Raptor engines in a significant event before the long-awaited 33-engine static fire test. This milestone puts the Super Heavy booster one step closer to being ready for Starship's first orbital flight. For the third time in three months, SpaceX has fully assembled Starship 24 and Super Heavy Booster 7 after another period of separate tests, repairs, and modifications. Is Starship far more significant and more robust than other rockets? Measuring around 120 meters or 390 feet tall from ship tip to booster tail, the fully stacked rocket is again the largest ever assembled. Compared to the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets SpaceX currently operates, Starship is far more enormous. It's also meant to be fully reusable, while the Falcon family, which expends its orbital upper stage, is roughly 80% reusable. If SpaceX can meet its technical goals, Starship could eventually cost around a magnitude less to launch than Falcon while carrying approximately 5 to 20 times more payload per launch. In short, it could revolutionize the cost of access to orbit. SpaceX needs to make sure that Starship can reach orbit at all. Combined with orbital refilling and the ability to transfer fuel between Starships, Reusable Starships could radically exceed Falcon 9 or even Falcon Heavy's expendable performance. But first, SpaceX needs to ensure that Starship can reach orbit. Compared to Ship 20 and Booster 4, earlier prototypes were also fully stacked a few times in 2021 and early 2022 and 2023 before their retirement. Ship 24 and Booster are closer to supporting Starship's first orbital launch attempt. After their latest full-stack milestone, they could be just a few significant tests away from being cleared for flight. While this flight is currently targeting no earlier than mid-2023, the remaining work on both the booster and the ship, as well as the ground systems and infrastructure at the launch site, will likely push the debut of Starship into next year although. However, Vehicle production is accelerating, allowing the company to have a quick cadence of flights once the first flight is completed. Full stack testing paused, Booster 7 resumes static fire testing. Over two weeks, SpaceX teams tested the Ship 24 and Booster 7 full stack. This test campaign involved a partial load of either liquid oxygen or liquid methane one at a time and either on just one vehicle or both at once. These tests were meant to provide further data on fueling the massive rocket. This testing regime has been paused for a while as teams now prepare Booster 7 for the final leg of its static fire test campaign. So November 10th saw Booster 7 undergo a multi-engine spin prime test ahead of what was expected to be an attempt at a 16-engine static fire test later that day. However, the test was scrubbed shortly after the prime spin test. With a notice sent to residents of the static fire test for Monday, it was expected that this would be another try at firing half of the engines on Booster 7. The countdown proceeded to plan with the regular warning of a police siren for the T-10 minute mark. Although there was a short hold, the suppression system was activated before the record amount of Raptor engines fired up simultaneously. Chief Engineer Elon Musk confirmed the entire duration of 14 machines. In preparation for the resumption of this static fire test campaign, 
SpaceX teams have been installing shielding on the orbital launch mount, or the OLM, legs, and also tested the fire suppression system. Total nitrogen and water suppression system. It was expected that SpaceX would use the total nitrogen and water suppression system on the pad during the 14-engine static fire test, providing a crucial data point on the quality of this vital safety system at the residence. Additionally, shielding and protection panels are now being prepared for installation on the Starship launch tower. A new wall was erected in the past few weeks near the tower entrance, and a protective box is now installed at the tower's first level where the tank farm conduits and pipes meet with the building and start running up the length of it. Cladding panels have also been spotted nearby, a sign that likely points to them being installed soon and probably needed to protect the tower during the launch of the most powerful rocket ever built. NASA updates on Starship status, Ship 24's future. Unlike in previous instances, Ship 24's D-Stack from Booster 7 came as no surprise. With some insight provided by NASA on October 31st during a meeting of the NASA Advisory Council. Since Starship is deeply involved in NASA's Artemis program through the HLS contract, NASA has insight into the test campaign for its first orbital flight. During this meeting, officials mentioned that SpaceX intended to D-Stack Ship 24 for Booster 7, to continue its static fire test campaign, eventually culminating with the 33 engine stack fire test. The D stack took place on November 8th. The next day, Ship 24 was placed on suborbital pad B. This pad had been undergoing renovations and upgrades since the six engine stack fire test of Ship 24 just a few months ago. A substantial amount of scaffolding is currently being installed for this work, which could involve creating a more considerable flame protection and diverter system for the stand than what was there for the last six engine static fire test. The path to Ship 24's restack with Booster 7 is uncertain. A Raptor engine known to have been damaged on the vehicle's last static fire test was removed from the ship on November 12th. Therefore, a new machine must be installed before stacking the car on its booster. Still, it is also possible that the vessel will need to be static fired with its new engine to validate the data and improve the vehicle for flight. Once the vehicles return to the whole stack configuration, additional propellant load tests will likely occur as outlined in the NASA update. These tests would simulate a launch countdown sequence and would probably qualify as wet dress rehearsal tests, where the rocket and control room teams run through all the countdown steps minus igniting the engines and lifting off. SpaceX could also attempt a full stack complete engine static fire test at some point before launching as part of one of these WDRs. The company would also need an FAA launch license. However, as tends to happen, these are approved once most of the outstanding pre-launch tests are completed, sometimes issued just a few days before the launch. Elon Musk provided additional context after the 14-engine static fire, noting the next test will be a 20-second firing, followed by possibly another static fire. Ship 25 completes cryogenic proof testing, future vehicle production accelerates. Ship 25 was rolled out to the launch site on October 19th and was installed on suborbital pad A. Over the following three weeks, it performed several cryogenic proof tests and it was removed from the pad and transported back to the high bay at the production site. The outcome of the cryogenic proof tests has yet to be fully discovered, although no significant observable issues appeared during any of the tests. Therefore, it is expected that the work currently underway at the high bay is to prepare Ship 25 for its upcoming static fire test campaign, which includes the installation of its 3C level and 3 vacuum optimized Raptor 2 engine. This work at the high bay may also include testing the loading of Starlink V2 satellites in its payload bay using the payload integration box. A batch of Starlink V2 satellites was seen arriving recently at Starbase, probably fresh from the company's factory in Redmond, Washington, where these satellites are manufactured. Although Ship 25 enjoyed a few weeks of cryogenic proof testing, that was supposed to have been its flight partner, Booster 8, didn't even get such a treatment. 
This super heavy booster had been initially penciled in for Starship's second orbital flight test as the booster that would help push Ship 25 into orbit, but it was never tested. It was rolled back from the launch site and transported to what the fans know as the Rocket Garden at Starbase, a place now famous for being the final resting place of many of the Starship prototypes that have been scrapped or retired. However, Ship 25's new flight partner, Booster 9, was recently fully stacked inside the Mega Bay and now prepares for its own set of cryogenic proof tests, although the location of this test campaign is uncertain. There's no place for a super heavy booster to be tested other than at the OLM, and Booster 7 is occupying it for its static fire test campaign. During NASA's NAC meeting, another update related to the future flights of Starship. In particular, it was mentioned that the second flight test of Starship would include a propellant transfer test. This test will likely involve the transfer of fuel from the ship's header tanks to the main tanks and vice versa, presumably with the help of pumps or other similar mechanisms. However, not a lot of information has been revealed about this system. This booster, Booster 10, now has its methane tank fully stacked inside the Mega Bay and grid fins have been installed on it, indicating good progress in production for this vehicle. Ship 27 is also pushing through production with its standard dome and mid-LOX sections now mated together in the mid-bay. This ship is also expected to lack TPS tiles and aero surfaces, but unlike Ship 26, it will feature a payload bay. Its payload bay section received its Starlink V2 dispenser a month and a half ago, and it is now being processed within the tents at Starbase. The January 9th assembly of B7 and S24 confirms that the WDR will likely occur first, as conducting the first 33 Raptor Super Heavy static fire while fully stacked would unnecessarily risk the Starship. Ship 24 could fly on a future booster if B7 does not pass or survive proof testing. More likely than not, Ship 24 will be removed from Booster 7 after WDR testing, freeing Super Heavy for one final standalone static fire testing. If that testing clears Booster 7, Ship 24 will be reinstalled, possibly for the last time. While hardware challenges continue to trump paperwork, an FAA launch license is another significant hurdle between SpaceX and Starship's orbital launch debut. SpaceX and the FAA are in the middle of hammering out the details of such a license, which is partially contingent upon completing dozens of mitigation measures. While Starship's unprecedented size elevates the risk it could pose to residents, it's likely that the license is also contingent upon results from ground tests and will be one of the last gates to be lifted. SpaceX has a few windows that could be used for B7 and S24 full stack testing. CEO Elon Musk says that Starship could be ready for its first orbital launch attempt as early as late February or March 2023. SpaceX's first Starship orbital launch mount appears to have passed a busy week of stress testing, clearing the way for the company to transport a finished, super heavy booster to the pad. Using the same launch mount, the Starship booster is expected to attempt to complete some of the riskiest and most challenging tests SpaceX has ever conducted at its Starbase rocket development facilities. The schedule for that testing is unclear, but after an unusually drawn out period of qualification testing, Super Heavy Booster 7 or B7 could soon attempt a full static fire test of all 33 Raptor 2 engines. Before or after that crucial test, SpaceX is expected to install Ship 24 on top of Super Heavy B7 for Starship's first full stack wet dress rehearsal. Ultimately, if that testing produces the results SpaceX wants to see, CEO Elon Musk says that Starship could attempt its first orbital launch as early as February and as late as March 2023. Booster 7 Super Heavy B7 first left SpaceX's Starbase factory in March 2022 and has been in a continuous flux of testing, repairs, upgrades, and more testing in the nine months since. 
The 69 meter tall or 225 feet, nine meter wide or 30 feet steel rocket was severely damaged at least twice in April and July, requiring weeks of substantial repairs. But neither instance permanently crippled the Starship booster and booster seven testing has been cautious, but largely successful since the rocket's last close call. Following its return to the OLS in early August, Super Heavy B-7 has completed six static fire tests of anywhere from 1 to 14 of its 33 Raptor engines. It has almost certainly dethroned Falcon Heavy to become the most powerful SpaceX rocket ever tested. And on January 8, 2023, SpaceX rolled the missile back to Starbase's orbital launch site for the seventh time. According to statements made by CEO Elon Musk and a presentation from a NASA official, the last major standalone test between Booster 7 and Flight Readiness is a full 33-engine static fire. Together, B-7's 33 Raptor 2 engines could produce up to 7,600 tons of thrust at sea level, likely making Starship the most powerful rocket stage in the history of space flight. Starship prototype S-24's path has been a bit less rocky. The ship needed some less obvious repairs, particularly after its first tests in May 2022. Since August 2022, Ship 24 has completed three static fire tests, all seemingly successful. Most importantly, one of those tests ignited all six of S-24's Raptor engines, potentially qualifying it for an orbital launch attempt. Most recently, SpaceX completed a series of mysterious repairs, replaced and static fired one of S-24's engines, and removed the Starship from its test stand. With Booster 7 now awaiting installation on Starbase's orbital launch mount and Ship 24 near simultaneously removed from its test stand, SpaceX may attempt a different test before Super Heavy's full static fire. Instead, SpaceX could start by stacking Ship 24 and Booster 7 and conducting a full stack wet dress rehearsal before shifting focus to Booster 7's riskier static fire. A wet dress rehearsal is a routine test conducted before a rocket launch and is generally designed to simulate every aspect of a launch save for engine ignition and liftoff. Most importantly, that involves thoroughly filling the rocket with fuel and passing all checks the same rocket would need to give to be cleared for launch. For Starship, a total propellant load means filling both stages with an extraordinary 5,000 tons of liquid oxygen and methane fuel. SpaceX also needs to fill the rocket fast enough to keep that propellant super cool, which increases its density and overall performance. The first full-stack WDR will thus test Starbase's launch facilities just as much as Booster 7 and Ship 24. SpaceX has conducted many several Starship WDRs, but not with Ship 24. It's also never filled a super heavy booster with natural fuel, let alone both stages. Issues will likely be discovered as SpaceX pushes the envelope, requiring multiple attempts. In the spirit of caution, SpaceX has even taken the unusual step of stress testing Starship's orbital launch mount with a custom jig. In the first week of 2023, SpaceX used that jig to load pairs of the OLM's 20 hold down clamps with hundreds of tons of ballast, ensuring that they can withstand the immense weight of a fully fueled Starship. Proof tests of Super Heavy B4 and B7 have likely subjected the OLM to 2,000 plus tons of force, but a full Starship will weigh more than double the maximum weight the OLM has experienced. Plenty of risk remains, and SpaceX is trading speed for caution. But this extra cautious step has likely reduced the risk of the launch mount structure failing during wet dress and static fire testing. According to Musk, SpaceX has a real shot at preparing Starship for a late February orbital launch attempt. Nonetheless, Musk also implied that a full stack WDR and 33 engine static fire would probably be completed in a few weeks in September 22. What is clear is that SpaceX is more committed than ever to avoiding a catastrophic failure during Starship's first orbital launch attempt. This was all from today's video. Make sure you have hit the bell icon for upcoming videos, and if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.